What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Less Machine back here again for Practical Machinist. Before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Today we're going to be talking about the top three things you should look for when selecting a vendor. Let's get into it. So today on Shop Talk, we're going to be talking about the top three things to look for when you're selecting a vendor. Um, selecting vendors is incredibly important. Um, your supplier network and your vendor network is going to be just as important as your customer network. Um, your supplier network is going to determine how quickly you can turn around jobs, the kind of pricing you can offer on jobs. You know, they're just as important as the employees you have on the floor, in my opinion. Um, good suppliers can make or break, well, I should say suppliers can make or break a business. Um, so choosing the right ones is extremely important. So the first thing I look for, and the number one most important thing to me when selecting a vendor is customer service. That doesn't just mean that I can get somebody on the phone when I have a problem. Um, to me, good customer service starts with responsiveness. As any of you guys who've worked on the quoting end of things before, a lot of times when you get a job in that you are quoting on, or I guess the job you have the opportunity to quote on, you want to turn around your quote as quickly as possible. The quicker I get my quote in, especially if I can be the first one in, the more likelihood, in my opinion, of me getting that job. Um, you know, I want to be the first one across that desk. I want my customer to know that I, I'm going to turn it around. Also, you know, the longer you take to quote, typically the less time you'll have to do the job. If the customer has a two-week deadline and it takes you a week to get all your ducks in a row, your chances of getting that job are much lower. So responsiveness is key. You know, when I, especially when I'm calling a material supplier, I want to be able to get a quote over the phone if I can. So knowing that someone there is going to be able to pick up the phone, help me out, give me you know a quote on what I'm looking for is critical. And you would think that that is extremely common and not a very important thing to look for as if it's rare, but it is. Um, some companies are very good at this. Some companies are very bad at this. And I would go as far to say that some sales reps at companies are very good at this. And some sales reps at companies are very bad at this. Um, I used to have a material supplier. Well, I guess I still use them. But I absolutely loathe dealing with them because I would call them, it'd be hard to get somebody on the phone. Uh, it would take you know a day or two in order to just get a quote on some stock material. And you know, material prices change all the time, especially with markets the way they are right now. You know, you really want to stay on top of it so you have new numbers. And it was driving me nuts. You know, it would take me three, four days to get a quote out that in my head should take me a day or two. So I did a little digging around at that company and called a couple different sales reps. And lo and behold, I got somebody who now picks up the phone, is there for me. Um, it's a completely different experience with that same company. So knowing that I have somebody in my corner there that I can call and get responsive quotes out of is key. The other thing, and I did say, you know, I don't just want them to be there to pick up the phone when I have a problem, but having someone that you can call when you do have a problem that you know is going to be responsive and give you good customer service that way, is really important. Um, I can't tell you the number of times I've been having trouble with a tool or having trouble with, you know, a machine. Um, you know, I run a certain kind of machine and one of the reasons why I like them is that I can get service on the floor if I have a problem within a day or two. Um, if I didn't select that vendor for that application, I could spend a lot of more time down. Um, if I didn't select the tooling reps that I have, I would have a lot more downtime waiting for tools to come in if I got behind on something. So number one for me is customer service. I think if the customer service is there, it can overshadow a lot of different things. But that leads me to my second point. The second most important thing to me, and I guess it's about as important as the first, is knowing that vendor has my best interests at heart. And what I mean by that is this, is everybody in business period is out here to make money. No one is here just to have a good time and you know kill some hours and if we make a couple of dollars, that's fine. We're all in every business we're in across every industry because we want to make money and we need to support our families. So I understand that everybody out there in this industry is going to have an angle, especially vendors. Um, you know, they're looking to maximize their profits. They're looking to retain me as a customer and they're looking to expand. That doesn't mean that I want a vendor that doesn't have my best interests at heart. And by that, I mean, they're going to put profit over what I really need. My favorite tool, tool rep and the guy I order 90% of my stuff from, he has that position, I guess, with me 
because I know for a fact he has my best interests at heart. If I call him and I need a cheap four flute cutter that I know I'm gonna blow up four of, and I know that's what I want, and I tell him that's what I want, and he knows that's all I really need for what I'm doing, he'll sell me that. He's not gonna try to upsell me on a you know, 16 flute coated four times as much cutter if that's not what I want and that's not what I need. Conversely, if I'm working on a job and I'm doing something that's stupid, I know he's gonna tell me or maybe just remind me, hey listen, why don't you approach it this way? That kind of relationship where you know that they're really looking out for you and not just trying to sell you things you don't need or constantly upsell you is incredible. And it's really, if you find somebody or you know, if you find reps or companies that are like this, stick with them. Um, not having to play that game in the back and forth of always feeling like you're being sold to is critical. We all have enough on our plates without having to try to be polite and fend off things we don't need. So number two is knowing that your customer rep or, or sorry, your sales rep or that company has your best interests at heart. And number three, and this one really is below the first two, is pricing. And a lot of people may, you know, when your company's put this up top, let me put it this way, they're across no matter what kind of vendor you're looking for, whether it's material suppliers, subcontractors, um, cutters, maintenance, anything like that, there's always going to be a cheaper option. There's always gonna be a cheaper option. You can always race to the bottom, you can always find bottom barrel stuff. Pricing for me, however, really falls secondary to those two because if I get the first two, I'm willing to pay a little bit more to know that I'm gonna have somebody there to pick up the phone. Um, for instance, one of my other suppliers, I know they're not the cheapest at what they do. Let me, here's a quick story. I like supporting local whenever I can. I don't like supporting big international conglomerations any more than I have to. And the reason for that is I am not a large international conglomeration. I would like people to support my small business the way I can support theirs. So, you know, give and take that way. And this one material supplier that was local, I was getting a job quoted out for. And you know what, they were pretty responsive. They had what I needed on the shelf. Um, but at the end of the day, their pricing was easily double to two and a half times what it was paying for it from the big international conglomeration. Because of that, you know, I, I, I'll absorb 10% more. I'll absorb, you know, having to buy in bulk if I can support a little guy, but I can't absorb two to three times the cost. So that's why while price may not always be the main consideration, it definitely is a consideration. Um, you know, you can't support your friends just because they're your friends if they can't meet you halfway. So anyways, it's, it's something to keep in mind. There are a lot more factors that go into selecting a vendor. At the end of the day, you know, a lot of it is feel. If I just don't get along with a tooling rep and I don't want to see him every day, it doesn't matter how good his pricing is. I don't want to hang out with him. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want him in my shop. Um, you know, if the delivery schedules for a vendor don't line up with what I'm doing, you might have to pay a bit more or sacrifice a little bit of customer service in order to get it. But I think those three things are the most important to look for when selecting a vendor. Make sure you guys subscribe and like below. We are starting a new series here. I don't know if you saw it. It is the shop tour series. So make sure you guys are paying attention to that. It's going to be awesome. We're going all over the world to go inside shops. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I hope this has been helpful, guys. You have a great day. Take care.